25 initiative. And um, today we have a guest uh, from Russia, Vladimir Vasilyev. And uh, with a webinar from inspiration to manifestation, community spaces of love, experience of Anastasia or Anastasia, as we would say in Russian. Anastasia are communities in Russia. So let me bring our group into alignment before we start our work. Let's link together with energies of love and light and will to good. Let's align our individual centers. Let's hear deep silence of the group. Let's project our individual lights, the lights of our centers into the middle of the group. and visualize the beam of light with seven radiating points. Let's extend our alignment to the centers of the new group of world service. and centers of humanity. Visualize triangle, Shambhala hierarchy and humanity. Overshadowing the work of the group. We visualize the energy of Aquarius pouring through this triangle. Aiding our work. And as one group, we say, Radiance we are and power. We stand forever with our hands stretched out, linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning and the subtle world of love. We reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need we reach into the silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding. Thus, with the light, we work and turn the darkness into day.
So we're focusing on the group heart center and start our work. Thank you, Katya. And thank you, friends, for joining us today. As we work with the energies of Aquarius, pouring in abundance to us in the states of the solar festival, the full moon, we invite us to reflect on how we work to bring those Aquarian energies that inspire us to manifestation. And our guest today, Vladimir Vasiliev from Russia, a businessman and a friend of mine who got special gifts of working with manifestation of ideas, taking them into the material level of practical manifestation. We invited Vladimir to share with us about his experience, life experience, working with one of those great ideas of creating spaces of love that's been introduced by in the books of Vladimir Megre and Vladimir will tell us about that. But uh, before we go into um, this uh, sharing part of this, uh, of our work today, I just want to uh, tell you that today's meeting will be uh, different than uh, usually because Vladimir will be presenting in Russian and will be sharing with us in Russian. And I will be interpreting for him. It's an experiment. I'm not sure how it will work out, but it's, uh, we learn by doing, and that's one of the principles of Aquarian uh, age. So for that, uh, we thankful to Moria Federation for sharing with us their Zoom channel that allows us to have interpreters booths. And uh, in order to hear the translation, uh, you would have to uh, switch into the English channel, into the interpretation uh, booth. Uh, Michael uh, Crow, are you there? To maybe to explain it a little bit better, how the booth works. Hey, you need me to ex explain how people can uh, Yes. So in order to go into in order to go into your room, um, which is English, because the person here in the main room will be speaking in Russian, you click on the interpretation button on your bottom toolbar. And when you click on that, it looks like a, a globe with lines in it. Um, you choose English. And you will go into the English channel where you will hear Alexander translating the Russian into English. And that's about it. Um, is everybody finding that? If you're not finding that, potentially you can raise your hand or put in chat that you're not finding it. And if you're not sure where chat is, it's also on the toolbar on the bottom, it says chat. And if you wanna raise your hand, if you click participants, there's a, a raised hand button. Okay, Rosita, you can't find your interpretation icon. Is that correct? Um, yeah. 
Oh yeah, I yeah, iPad is. Hmm. iPads. I'm not gonna. Yeah, if you want to mute the original audio, you mute the original audio because that. If you don't, you'll just hear a low um, of the original, so you can mute it and just hear English, or you can keep it unmuted. So Rosita with an iPad, it's it's yeah, it's a problem because there's interpretation issues with iPad choosing interpretation from an iPad. Can you are you able to get on a computer or a phone, maybe? Is there anyone else that um, is having any issues? Um, Pana, I don't know how to say that name. <laughs> Just say Pana. So is Pana, you're not able to find the interpretation button? Um, let's see, um, would you be able to speak, Pana? Can you tell me what you're having a problem with? Yes, uh, uh, is it possible to hear both languages? If you put, when you're in the channel, if you don't choose mute original audio, you will hear a low um, of the original. Um, the only way to hear both languages simultaneously at full volume would be to use another device and, and come in on the other device and then listen to it on one device and then listen to it in the other channel on another device. There's two choices. There's off and then English and Russian. Yeah, if it's um, off, there's you're just going to be in the main room. Um, if it's English, you're going to be in the room with... Alexander speaking English from Russian. If you choose Russian, it will just be if Alexander chose to switch to Russian and speak in the Russian channel. So the only channel that's being used is English. Okay, thanks. Okay, so I think I think we're good now and we can Yeah, we're good start. except for Zeta. I'll try to find a solution and write to you directly. Okay, Rosina. Thank you, Michael. Yep. Um uh, Vladimir, uh, so we thank you for joining us and the floor is yours. Uh, Vladimir, microphone to Добро пожаловать. Hello everybody. I'm very glad to be with you you and uh, i want to wish light love and power for us everybody so a few words about anastasia there are many words written about her by vladimir megre if to put it briefly she's a siberian hermit a beautiful young woman with physical strength and who has uh, like superpowers. Whole year she lives uh, in, in the forest uh, in a tent made out of the tree branches, eats only uh, food that's provided by animals, brought to her by animals. So there is harmony between uh, a human and, uh, and nature. So this idea is uh, all through the books. She wears a, a dress that's made out of the anatomy. Thanks to that, uh, in Russia now, this, uh, there is a whole movement of using nettle uh, for making clothes. She can heal. She can see future, she can change fate. 
she can uh, move across space, uh, visit other civilizations. She knows not only all the languages, but also how every all technologies work, even uh, flying sources, even though she lives in uh, Taiga in the forest all life. A uh, spherical uh, being uh, is a friend of Anastasia. It's an uh, energy that uh, is a friend of Anastasia and comes with your uh, first call. If we uh, talk about where she's from, her ancestors lived in the forest for thousands of years. She's an ancestor of uh, a singer called Bard. She teaches that before Christ, there were uh, uh, people uh, call, uh, uh, that she called Celts, uh, who got initiation from Druidic priests. The singer had a moral a right to go to the people and uh, teach singing using words that would uh, heal and help advance. This bard's singers would see the, the future and the news uh, dawn. Personally, for me, Anastasia, it's a legendary mythical uh, character uh, that has uh, ancestral memory, who can see the future and can precipitate uh, thought forms that can energize reality. Besides Vladimir Migre, nobody saw her. So probably she's a joint character, uh, uh, imaginary character that combines the best features of humans. Ideas of Anastasia bring uh, joy and light. She teaches how to become happy and your advices are clear and absolutely practical. For example, a person has to uh, plant a garden, build a house and settle a love in your heart and teach their kids. It's so natural. So that's why so many people uh, believe her and follow her, changing their lives, opening their talents and bring back their health, healing themselves. Schools of joy has been created based on ideas of Anastasia. If we uh, uh, talk about how the movement of Anastasia started, in 1994, Vladimir Migre uh, went on a trip uh, to River Op in Siberia. Uh, there were several ships in this caravan that stopped in a small village. That's how the, the story about Anastasia uh, begins in the books of Vladimir Migre. The big emphasis in these books goes on so-called singing cedar. And that's what the second title of the books about Anastasia. These are amazing cedars that live for 500 years and then they start ringing, radiating the energy that can heal uh, people and advance, help advancing them. Migre uh, assigns uh, divine uh, qualities to these cedars. And there was life and the life was like light. As I was traveled a lot in Russia, I want to share my personal uh, experience uh, being in the theater forest. It was before the books of Megre showed up and been published. I was in a, a village called Sovetsky. It's near the, uh, on the river Op. That's where it's described by Vladimir Megre uh, and where Anastasia lives. So back then, like we would uh, go to Taiga uh, to pick up berries, mushrooms. So taiga, it's 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 uh, 
not uh, transparent wood. It's there like many uh, trees fallen out and it's easy to be lost there. There are no roads there. And there are a lot of mosquitoes there. We were uh, going for mushroom picking. And so like all that we were finding, they were uh, like not good and we had to throw them out. And so they were like a lot of mosquitoes. So you had to be really well dressed, like with, with, with a lot of anti-repellents on you. And nothing good was in that experience. So we had like that passed like for a couple of hours like that. And suddenly we, as if we enter it in a different world, green grass, flowers, no mosquitoes, no fallen trees, just transparent, clean forest, tall uh, trees, fresh air, and even the heat went away with fresh breeze. A lot of fresh mushrooms. That was cedar wood. We rested well there, removed all the like heavy clothes. With every breath, we could breathe joy. That was my first experience being in the cedar forest. After the uh, first year of the expedition to Siberia, Vladimir Megre goes to another a trip. And in the same village, he meets her, uh, the beautiful woman named Anastasia. So all the books uh, by Vladimir Negre are based uh, on the, the story of Anastasia and the dialogues with her. Vladimir Negre uh, fell in love with Anastasia and uh, they, the nine months, they got a son. So I want to talk here about ideas presented by Anastasia. This, the main, I, one of the main ideas presented by Anastasia was the space of love. Only the space of love can help humanity to cross through these dark times in history of humanity. And these are the exact words of, the, of Anastasia. Only love can save the world from uh, death and destruction. So what is the space of love? First of all, for the space of love, you need to have a base. The base is ancestral dwelling. It's one of the main ideas. It's, this, it's, the, it's the land of one hectare that's given to family, uh, to family for uh, uh, use uh, like forever. And it's, so like briefly talking about, this is, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a one hectare of land, like hundred by hundred meters where family with love can build their own house, can plant their ancestral tree, own forest, own garden, set up a pond. This land uh, is surrounded by trees and uh, uh, mm, all the plants creating some kind of fence, like natural fence around this uh, land. Special love of Anastasia is, uh, turned towards so-called Dutchniki, like people who get, uh, live in their uh, uh, small uh, plots of land. Anastasia uh, tells uh, to Migre how uh, these uh, people who live on the land can create their own paradise, their great own uh, space of love, and to become the next generation of happy uh, families. The a special role in uh, creating space of love is given to the plant. They have to be uh, planted uh, by a special project, uh, like special uh, setup. 
uh, creating this space of love and uh, helping. So as an example, I, I will tell you about the, uh, the rituals. It's, it's the, Sorry, I have to ask Vladimir to go a little bit slower. Anastasia, uh, uh, explains in detail about the ancient ritual uh, of engagement. Through this ritual, the a young couple would create uh, a project, uh, the vision for their settlement, for their space of love. And during the actual ritual, the, uh, the couple, with the help of their parents, their friends, they would uh, use a ritual of imagine visualization that would come through in a few minutes, creating the space of love. According to Maigret, this ritual is the, uh, the biggest invention of this millennium. By using this ritual, uh, young couples already now during the wedding ritual, they can re receive, the, uh, receive the house, this garden and their ancestral dwelling. So just how it happens. So when the young couple comes to their uh, uh, future ancestral dwellings, to their piece of land, to their plot of land, so all who invited to the wedding would bring with them uh, seedings and the young trees that they would, uh, by the request of the young couple, they would uh, plant them on their plot of land in the places directed and shown by the young couple. Thus, in one or two days, the future garden, uh, the, the new garden of the future ancestral dwellings would be planted. Nastasia also is uh, saying that those who create their ancestral dwellings uh, following that ritual, they never ran out of love. And with time, their love only grows stronger. Anastasia explains, explains why that happens. When uh, a husband looks at her uh, wife, he subconsciously identifies her with he, the beautiful dwelling and the, the future kid that's uh, who uh, meant to be born in this land and this place and we can believe that and for each human the best place in the world is always stays his little there the place of origin, the ancestral land. And the most beautiful kid of all, kids of all will be he, his or her kid. Also Anastasia states, if all people or majority of people will start consciously create their ancestral dwellings, making them into paradise oasis and the whole earth will transform. There are not gonna be uh, natural disasters, no wars. The inner spiritual world will change of a, of a person. The new knowledge will be open to him or her and new abilities will come. Even on other planets, 
humans will be able to create their dwellings similar to those on earth. Throughout all the books by Vladimir Megre, uh, there is a story of the divine nature of human. God gave the half of him or her to humanity. So therefore, a human is similar as creator as God. But only in half the human is divine. Human, like a person, a human is uh, owns the universe, the divine self. And according to Anastasia, God wanted his son to become more powerful than himself. Human can create and advance the world with the power of own thoughts. Human thought is capable to create other worlds or change the ones that are in existence. A human is the master of all universal energies. Soon, the earth will be dwelled by gods who are humans who are able, capable to ex receive, accept the energy, find energy. It's quite interesting. The idea of, of Anastasia about death and life. And uh, also about uh, burial uh, rituals. Soul can incarnate best uh, if he or she could create it, the space of love on own plot of land. Cultivated that space. And after that, his body will be buried on that land. According to Anastasia, uh, people should not be buried uh, in the cemetery, but they should be buried in own land then the soul would be able to incarnate uh, into the matter, into the body, in the earth paradise. As an example, in our own anesthetial uh, dwelling, one of the uh, like, like families lost their daughter uh, and they buried her uh, in their own plot of land. And there's this interesting, like it's an amazing sense that her presence is always there on that plot of land. I've been there and I could uh, attest that it's, that's this, this sense you get there. What else, Anastasia? All divine creatures are eternal. Uh, self-sustained and self uh, everything uh, on the land is united and eternal. So it's, it's, it's very similar to ideas of Buddhism. The light forces are the light thoughts ever created by humans. All space is filled with those thoughts. Diseases that humans have a result of uh, self-abstraction from nature and dark feelings that uh, a human allows within. Plants create thoughts and feelings. It's interesting that all this is uh, uh, supported by scientific findings. For example, how would the, 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 uh, the gardens are created? In order to plant the seedings, you need 
you need to like, uh, uh, dig a hole in the ground with your own uh, uh, hands, with your own toes, you have to kind of smoosh the, the, the earth and you have to spit into the, the hole in the ground. As like through your feet, they're like, uh, uh, with your sweat comes information about your disease. And so the, the, seed, the seedlings that you put in that hole, they receive the information about your uh, issues. And so fruits that will be grown in the future tree will help you to uh, heal you. You have to communicate with the plants and during the full moon, you have to touch your plants. One of the other uh, ideas, great ideas that go through all the books of Anastasia is reestablishing the balance between human and nature. And it's difficult to argue that. It's vital for all of us. Such uh, regeneration happens uh, due to life with, uh, on nature, with, together with, na with nature. Naturally, that not all of us can live uh, on own lands for a whole year, but people uh, really strive to uh, get to that. That's why Anastasia uh, emphasizes Dachniki, those who have their small plots of land in Russia. Anastasia uh, expressed the new idea through this, like living in the, on your own small plot of land, how you grow your plants, how you uh, uh, surround your uh, space with love, how you uh, create your own garden. One of the main ideas of creating the ancestral dwelling is the space of love. It's the ideas of nutrition. Ancestral dwelling allows to uh, get products, the food ideal for the master on the land. That food helps you to heal without medicine. And Anastasia, she gives a, a mysterious formula. You need to eat as if you breathe. This formula had been given a long time ago by priests, uh, ancient priests, but not been recognized for what it is. This mystery uh, of healing nutrition is pretty simple. You need to eat what you grow, grown on your own land. Everything has to be fresh, right from the garden. Food must be the, uh, diverse as much as possible. As the plants bloom, you practice breathing, uh, getting nutrition from air uh, uh, filled with uh, uh, prana. She talks also a lot about beekeeping. She even gives uh, some uh, um, uh, drawings of special natural uh, bee houses for bees. The, the honey is taken only on the second year, only after the bees went uh, through, uh, through the winter. And, uh, and only the honey that's not uh, being consumed by bees can be taken by humans. In general, self-sustained uh, uh, living at, with nature, it's, it's the, the space itself, which is due to the due planning protects uh, from wind, holds uh, warmth and uh, uh, water. And it's not only feeds you, but also gives you uh, uh, firewood or uh, heat your uh, house. House made out of natural, uh, made of natural materials. A house
it's the special way how the house should be built it anesthesia explains and it's very it keeps warmth at winter uh, talking about anesthesia herself it's interesting that she lives in so-called zimlian case like a, a, a house like a, a mud made of mud and protected with the cedar branches uh, with uh, uh, dry grass uh, on, on the ground. Naturally, there is like no uh, electric power there or any uh, radiation of uh, any devices. According to books of Migre, during the winter, Anastasia goes in so-called, like into hibernation. There was certain research made that actually such hibernation is very uh, uh, useful and healing, give uh, regenerating uh, powers, and like the 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 whole uh, body re regenerates own uh, resources. I really enjoyed one of our ideas by Anastasia. It's how she talks uh, the uh, the the um, people who like uh, cr criminals who uh, have to be incarcer incarcerated. Instead of that, they have to be uh, settled on the big plot of land where each of them gets one hectare of land. Like the whole like this uh, territory fenced as uh, any uh, prison, but that incarcerated, they live on their own the plot of land. They land their garden, their own forest, they uh, grow their own food, they uh, have uh, uh, animals, and they stay in touch with uh, their relatives. That helps them to uh, uh, heal themselves and they transform. And so when this, uh, incarceration period is over, the fence is just removed and it just becomes one of the ancestral realms. So we can talk a lot about an ideas by Anastasia, but I would like to, to share my own experience, life in the ancestral dwelling, how it happened, what I did, with the sequence of my actions. First of all, I read the books by Migre. My wife totally shared my ideas and we started looking for a place to create our own ancestral dwellings. We traveled a lot went to differing uh, towns in Vladimir, uh, Tula, and uh, we lived in tents or in our car, we travel. Through internet, we learned about uh, the uh, village Agevka, and we learned that there is an Anastasia uh, community uh, is uh, been started there. It's 400 kilometers uh, south from Moscow. So we thought maybe it will be a little bit warmer than in Moscow and a little uh, closer to our native Ukraine, to Kharkov. So it's uh, halfway between Kharkov and Moscow. So we came there, we spent a few nights there living in the tent, met uh, local people in the community. Right in that moment, this community was just starting. Everyone was very uh, inspired, telling uh, stories of a uh, uh, beautiful future that will come there. So that confirmed our uh, intention to create our ancestral dwelling there. And so in the spring, we came there I went for a walk and suddenly 
sunshine and the spring, uh, sp the sound of springs, uh, like first flowers from under the snow, the first chirking, welcoming spring coming. And we realized this is our place. This is our land. We started looking for a house that uh, is for sale. Naturally, it was difficult to start in a, like just in an empty field, though there were people who were starting their dwellings just on like empty space. So we liked one place. It was on a, a, a hill and you could see it from far and we called it like Wysoka, like, uh, like on the top, uh, like a high place. We bought that uh, house and started building. We learned only later that before revolution of 1917, exactly at that place, there was a residence of a uh, local landowner, and that house was destroyed later, but the place was good. So first we created the, the uh, drawings of the new house, uh, we imagine how it will look. It was a beautiful project. But meanwhile, we decided to fix the existing house. We fixed it, uh, built a adjacent room, another room, and stayed lived there. It grew and became as it is now. So work on the on in our garden and our land still continues. Many ideas come and we manifest them. Own space is eternal creativity, never ending creativity. I I can share that certain ideas were uh, manifested uh, many building this house. For example, that the in the inclination of the roof would be aligned with the 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 eyes uh, sides uh, uh, of the observer, and so it looks like it's it's lower, even though there are like three floors. On the south uh, side of the house, the roof is inclined that in summer it creates shade, and in winter sun comes to the, uh, the, the windows and warms up the room. On the ground floor, we have lilacs blooming in front. Uh, it's spring and summer, the lilac blooms, and it's beautiful, protects from heat. And in winter, there are no leaves and it's transparent and the room gets uh, uh, sunshine and uh, some warmth. By the way, one of the Anastasia ideas, we built a bee house. So what is bee house? Apic therapy. So apic, uh, apis is a bee. So the healing in apic house, it's, it's been uh, living inside the uh, bee house. So you can sleep inside the beehive. The structure of bee uh, uh, house, that's like, of course, the, a person, a human, and bees are isolated. Like you don't have like the direct contact. Uh, I have some kind of mesh that separates uh, me from the bees. Imagine that you uh, lay on a mat, some kind of mattress, and below you, like thousand or hundred fifty thousand of bees that share with you their uh, energy, uh, their sense, and um, like unstoppable like resonance that you can feel with your whole body. The headaches uh, go away, your moods are amazing, you rest completely. 
the healing effect of that is composed of three main uh, factors of the of the of the positive influence. It's micro vibration. That's created by the the, 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 the the bees fly and they're like micro charges, like micro electrical charges from the wings of the birds kind of uh, radiate. The second is like healing air that comes from beehives. This mix of all the scents, aromas of honey, uh, propolis. And and the third, the, the actual the 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 radiance of the beehive family as the whole. And of course, yeah, of course, we naturally eat our own. Uh, healing honey that we got from our bees, and if we mix it with uh, nuts. It's amazing. So I want to talk a bit about the lessons learned. Oh no, before that, a few more words about the space of love. Anastasia talks a lot about uh, giving birth to a child like home uh, birth, giving birth at uh, home. How you create thought forms while uh, a woman still pregnant? All three uh, of my children who were born uh, in this ancestral dwellings. I was uh, uh, I was a midwife for my wife, and even uh, our, like our neighbors invited me as a midwife to uh, help in 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 uh, uh, birth. It's interesting experience uh, like for a man uh, to feel how you can help uh, a woman, assist a woman, and when there is there is no you and just her. It's just like uh, like uh, one example. So now back to the uh, lessons learned. So when we came to Agiv and started living there, at that time. It was the first phase of dwelling, establishing dwellings. When the group establishment was happening, when the idea of Anastasia kind of descended to a group of people, there were a lot of enthusiasm, joy, a willingness to uh, give your uh, life and energy, and a lot of love to each other. I was lucky enough to uh, uh, experience that phase. We would go for, uh, visit each other. Each one would bring like a, a, a seedling, like a new plant with uh, a new tree to plant on a neighbor's uh, lands. People shared what they uh, manufactured uh, or grown, just like vegetables, fruits, own uh, baked bread. It was amazing, but that was just the beginning, like a year or two. Later, the second phase started, so-called individualization, when each family went into own land and own issues, like uh, trying to get more land, more plants, get more uh, food from your land to preserve and then later to sell. The first uh, the capital uh, uh, that was available at the beginning ran out. So uh, men had to go back to cities to uh, get some earnings. Women stayed with kids on the land. In the winter and fall, the roads are untranspassable. 
only like on like three wheelers you could get through. I had that one. I was like this. We had like a like this. Like there was a whole adventure to get to your own land from the roads through the dirt road. Like those, uh, it took me seven hours to get to your land to your uh, uh, from the roads. So it was a whole adventure. I returned to be the uh, the uniting factor was uh, lacking. There was no leader who would bring together people uh, together. While I still was uh, like go there often, I would invite people. Uh, I had my like inspirations and my spiritual resources and like material resources. So I could bring people. Uh, and so people would come to my place. We would play instruments, we would sing, we show, we share with each other our accomplishments. But with time, that's gone, been gone. As people started getting like more like uh, preoccupied only with own houses and their own spaces. And that wasn't a positive experience. So that was individualization, which according to the laws of the uh, universe, at some point, like, we'll, like we have to go through that uh, before we go into the group consciousness. So unfortunately, people don't have enough inner resources for group life only for own individual family life. Like example of one of the families, uh, Marina and Tolia, Anatoly, they were, were producing, uh, they still producing clothing of uh, metal. They uh, supply uh, the, their clothes to the stores uh, started by Vladimir Migre. While they didn't do their business, they lived by their ideas. They walked around, they dressed here. They had very simple needs. They didn't have a refrigerator. They didn't have a car. Later, as they started their business and money started running to family, as, as accumulation of resources, brought this urban civilization to their home. So I can say that if you really want to create the real Anastasia dwellings, ancestral dwellings, you have to change yourself, transform yourself. Otherwise, you will just create your house. It will be in nature. It will be more uh, friendly living as urban dwellings but you will have for the internet, gadgets, TVs, everything, and all the uh, goods of technocratic civilization. And there is a result, colossal amount of work to support all those benefits of civilization. So that's the lesson I've learned. We have to start inner transformation. And that's probably the main key. So that's like a brief. So if there are questions, I will be happy to answer those questions. Thank you for your attention. If you don't mind, I suggest we have now a united meditation. This meditation we were uh, uh, doing together with uh, our uh, community in Nagevka when we were coming together. Uh, 
А, Володя, ты сейчас паузу не начал. So now Vladimir will lead the meditation and I will be uh, uh, translating it in the main channel. So I said, uh, invite you to switch back to the main room uh, because the, the main audio will be uh, not here in the translation booth, but in the main channel. So just switch back to the original uh, channel, the same as you got to the uh, this interpreter's booth. So we are now back into the main uh, channel. So uh, Vladimir will be leading our meditation here and I will be translating it uh, sequentially. Uh, I apologize, there is some, might be some uh, audio interference from outside. Uh, I hope it's not too loud. Uh, Daniela, can you tell me if there is sound interference coming from you? Daniela? Or Katya? Uh, I can hear you in English. English and the, in both is channels. there sound interference coming from me? No. Nope. No, no really. interference. Thank you. And uh, but your your voice is slightly muffled, so you can get closer to the mic or something. Mm -hmm. Is it better yeah. now? A little bit further, not so close. <laughs> <laughs> Thank okay. you. Very much. Thank you. Is it better? Yes. Thank you. Um, Володя, uh, когда ты готов, можем начинать. Я готов. Садимся в удобную позу с ровным позвоночником. Get in a comfortable position with your back straight. Keeping your spine aligned. Разводим руки в стороны, обнимая весь мир. We spread our arms to the sides, embracing the whole world. И на вдохе прижимаем руки к сердцу. And while inhaling. We press our hands to our heart. Этим ритуальным движением мы принимаем в свое сердце весь мир, все человечество таким, как оно есть. With this ritual movement, we take into our hearts the whole world, all of humanity as it is. Ощущаем на вдохе наполненность своего сердца, своей анахат, бесконечным миром, бесконечным. We feel our heart filled with infinite peace. А затем плавно выдыхаем, опуская руки ладонями вниз, как бы опуская это ощущение в нашу муладхару. Then we exhale in smoothly, lowering our hands with palms down, bringing the energy into the base center. Мудхара. Опуская руки ладонями вниз на выдохе, мы осаждаем энергию любви и света, фундамент наших намерений, 
в основу нашей жизни. As we lower our hands with our palms down, we exhale, precipitating the energy of love and light into the foundation of our intentions, into the foundation of our life. Затем мы концентрируем внимание на альта-центре. Then we focus on the altar center. Если кто-то не знает, где он, то можно плавно, вводя по затылку указательным пальцем и прислушиваясь к ощущениям в голове, его найти. In order to fight to find your altar center, you can smoothly slide your index finger along the back of your head, listening to the sensations in your head. When you touch the point of the center, your thoughts stop achieving in silence. We concentrate our attention on this point. What? В альта состояние это первая ступень начала любых практик это состояние вне личности без оценок и желаний это состояние единства с миром to shift into the alpha states of consciousness is the first stage the beginning of any practice, including healing. This is a state outside the personality, without assessments and desires, a state of unity with the world. Прибывая в Альте, мы как бы из затылка расширяем свое сознание, ощущая единство друг с другом и всем миром. Принимая все как есть, без оценок и сравнений, без отсчета времени и расстояния, мы пребываем в вечности и бесконечности, вне ограничения формы, физического тела и личности. of the head we expand our consciousness feeling unity with each other and with the whole world accepting everything as it is with no evaluation or comparison without counting time and distance <coughs> we abide it in, in eternity and infinity beyond the limitations of the form of the physical body and personality. Не теряя этого ощущения, опускаем сознание Муладхару, представляя себя находящимся на прочной скале, в фундаменте, осознавая мощь и непоколебимость своего истинного Я, своего устремления к свету и любви, к единству со всем сущим. Without losing this feeling, we shift our awareness into Muladhara, base center, imagining ourselves to be on a solid rock, a foundation, realizing the power and steadfastness of our true self, our striving for light and love, for unity with all that exists. Поднимаем сознание к Сахасраре, визуализируем свет, нисходящий на нас всех и себя лично. Свет очищает, омывает, объединяет.
we raise our awareness to the Sahasrara, crown center, and visualize the light descending on us all as a group and each of us individually. This light cleanses, washes, unites. Опускаем сознание в анахату и физически ощущаем тепло между лопатками и обнимаем сзади из этой точки друг друга и весь мир любовью, теплотой, сопереживанием и состраданием своими крыльями души. Now we bring our awareness into Anahata, heart center, and feel the physical warmth between the shoulder blades. And from this space behind your back, as if with the wings of the soul, we embrace each other and the whole world with love, warmth, empathy, and compassion. Тихо пребываем в этом состоянии, ощущая свет, любовь, могущество и единство. In this state, we stayed for a while, sensing light, love, power, and unity. And Разводим руки в стороны, обнимая весь мир, и на вдохе прижимаем этот мир и руки к своему сердцу. Embracing the whole world, and while inhaling, we press our hands to our hearts. И теперь из сердца опускаем руки ладонями вниз, уладхари, направляя свое состояние в основу. While inhaling, we are aware of the energy in the heart. And then we exhale smoothly, lowering our hands to the palms down. We bring the energy and senses we accumulated during the meditation into the base center, Mothara. As we lower our hands, palms down, we exhale and precipitate the energy of love and light into the foundation of our intentions, into the foundation of our life. Ощущаем свою наполненность светом, любовью. Делаем глубокий вдох. И на выдохе из Муладхара произносим Ом, уносящийся высоко вверх, к высшим силам, к иерархии. 
We sound Om from Muladhara, Runahata, Alta, and Sahasrara. Our sending invocation to the higher forces, to the spiritual hierarchy. И снова делаем глубокий вдох. И сверху со звуком Ом ощущаем нисходящую божественную энергию, свет и любовь, проходящую через Сахасрару и опускающуюся вниз через все чакры в Муладхару. And we sound the descending Ом from top to bottom through Sahasrara and up to Muladhara, thus precipitating divine energy, light and love. И снова делаем глубокий вдох и от сердца произносим Ом обнимая все человечество, весь мир, соединяясь с ним своей любовью. Ом. And with the third Ом, we pronounce Ом from the heart, embracing all humanity, the whole world, uniting with it with our love. Thank you very much. Спасибо. Thank you, friends. We still have a few minutes. If anyone would like to ask any questions and share any comments, please raise your hand. And uh, Daniela, if you could please uh, unmute. It seems uh, um, I can unmute myself, but I'm, as I'm not co-host, <laughs> I cannot unmute, you know. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> do, you, um, do you need to record anymore? Because I can um, put you as co-host. Yeah, we can maybe stop the recording and then I can then co-host. Yeah, thank you. There we go. Thank you. Many comments of saying thank you. The recording will be available on our YouTube channel. That's 
as a response to Joel and so for everybody to know. And as for the books, um, I'm guessing we can find them, yes, the references, yes. I know the books were translated to English and published a while ago. Um, I'm not sure if they're still available. And Mikhail, please unmute yourself. What? Um, there is a question from Mikhail, the raised hand, so I... Yes, oh, okay. not me. <laughs> so I... Yes, Misha. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 the question will be asked in Russian and uh, Mikhail asking me to translate, so I invite mm -hmm. uh, to switch back to the uh, translation uh, booth. Uh, uh, Вопрос вот какой. Володя, учился ли ты специально, либо у кого-то, рада вспоможению? Did you uh, study specifically how to help uh, with birth, uh, giving birth? It was a... Vladimir says, yes, I was studying that uh, from a very interesting woman who travels around the world um, and teaches how to uh, uh, assist with uh, home birth. So I studied the basic uh, principles and rules. From everything I learned, the main principle was they don't uh, bring your own ideas uh, to a uh, woman, like you just assist in here. And so uh, also I can tell that we were using uh, singing balls. It was very interesting how they help uh, a, a baby to be born faster, okay, and relaxing and uh, uh, inviting him to become a, and further the Anastasia ideas, then when you like, cut your umbilical cord, then when you uh, take placenta to bury in the your ancestral land, like ancestral dwellings land. So it's in a few other ideas in the book. Is, any, uh, is it good for you, Mikhail? Um, I hope you are comfortable switching back and forth between channels depending on what language is spoken. So uh, we'll go back to main room now. I see uh, Maya and Olga uh, put some information about the books. Uh, and uh, thank you. Uh, so you can find it in the chat. So we're now at the end of our time allocated for this webinar. And I want to thank 
есть спасибо большое, Володя, за то, что ты поделился с нашей аудиторией. Действительно уникальный опыт. I want to express gratitude to Vladimir who shared his experience with our audience. Indeed, very unique experience. Спасибо, что дали мне возможность поделиться. You don't need to have a hectare of land to create your own space of love. It can be done within your own room, your own apartment, with your own house plan. And Lisa says, creating our space of love here with everyone. Thank you, friends. Much love to all. And we continue holding our space of collective love in our meditation. And the exact time of the full moon tomorrow. So please let's be connected in our subjective space of love.